Hello everybody and welcome back. You know, after Kung Fu Panda 3's serviceable conclusion, they had to jinx themselves and tell a story that didn't need to be told. Kung Fu Panda 4 is not terrible, but so unlike the other movies that I don't even think it should be considered as part of the series. This movie reminds me a lot of Toy Story 4, with most of the characters on the sideline and the focus being on the main character and the new ones Po meets along the way. And so I think the best way to start is to talk about the new characters first and walk back. Wow. Zen. What a waste of potential. She ended up being a decent character, but could have done so much more. On the surface, she seems very similar to Poe, with both of them being orphans. The thing that makes them different is that Poe with, was taken in to a loving family while Zen was always used for her abilities. This makes Zen feel more like Poe 2.0, but where they excel is the hope of where they can take her character in future movies. Another thing I think Zen, uh, DreamWorks nailed was the comedic tone of her character, and almost every joke that she made that made me laugh out loud. However, because her character had a very comedic tone, it made it harder for me to buy some of her more emotional scenes in the second half. She does, however, become the Dragon Warrior at the end, so I'm, I am hoping they will be able to take the potential of her character and expand on it in Kung Fu Panda 5, the same way they expanded Poe's story in the second one. Our villain, the Chameleon, is such a nothing villain who gives zero to the movie. There was nothing for the Chameleon to do in the hour and a half movie and only has a few scenes until the end, and considering the movie's themes about change, there was so much more they could have done with her. In her second scene, she tells us that she was like Poe, except she, except no one accepted her, and she wanted revenge. But think of how satisfying it would have been if we learned about her backstory all ill, and we were able to connect the dots ourselves between Poe and the Chameleon. Chameleon's role as the villain just isn't thought out as much as uh, the other Kung Fu Panda villains, who had so much more effort put into them. Next, let's talk about Poe. Oh, Poe, what a comedic genius. How on earth could they mess him up when they already finished his arc? He is the same lovable goofball he has always been, but just like Sen, most of his screen time is used for jokes instead of dramatic moments that flesh out the character. The movie is about change, but they never say why Poe needs a change from being the Dragon Warrior. They could have done something very interesting with Poe needing to walk with the villain, and they do the same and do the same thing Master Ugwe did for him. But the movie doesn't seem interested in that angle. It's sad to say that animation is the only part of the movie that still feels like Kung Fu Panda. The animation looks pretty good and matches the comedic tone of this movie 
pretty well. With its fast-paced and fluid animation, each set feels completely different, with each one having its own unique look that reflects what the place is. Unfortunately, there are only two locations we visit, which makes the movie feel smaller. Kung Fu Panda 2 also had a few locations, but they made up for it with just how crazy they went with the animation. The story takes a very chill and comedic approach to the story. Just like in Kung Fu Panda 3, except in that case, they just came off of Kung Fu Panda 2, one of the darkest and action-packed movies DreamWorks has ever made, so it makes sense that they would want to go a little more light-hearted with the sequel. The only two characters of importance are Poe and Zen, but they only have one scene where they somewhat bond. In the end, they are only friends because that's what the movie wants you to believe. This story's pacing is also abysmal. That I completely forgot that this movie was about change. This story's pacing is also so abysmal that I completely forgot that this movie was about change when they mentioned it in the final act. Also, why is this movie about change? It just makes the movie more messy when the theme should have been connected to Poe and Zen's journey. Mr. Payne and Ling get a subplot and honestly, once again, it just makes the movie feel more messy and rush. The subplot should have just been a spin-off or the main plot so they could have focused on, the, on one of the plots and it wouldn't have taken so much time away from the one main plot. In the end, honestly, contrary to, this, to what I've been saying here, I don't think this movie is that bad. Just go in with proper expectations here. Don't think that this movie is going to be, like, the next big thing. Just go in thinking this is just going to be a fun little distraction movie. That's all for now, guys. And of course, stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Please like and subscribe.